giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. Uh, we're going to start alphabetically, as mentioned. Justin, you were over in the Archimedes division. Uh, why don't you give us just a little bit of rundown? We'll all kind of just chime in as we go through. Yeah, so I'm on Team 3015. We compete in the Archimedes division. Uh, going into the event, we noticed that there was a good crop of probably eight or ten really strong teams. Um, and just based on the seeding and how the teams play, that the, the top eight alliance or the top eight um, ranked teams at the end of qualification rounds were pretty much what we expected to see, uh, maybe with a couple of exceptions. So uh, during the alliance selections, uh, 5460, strike zone, I call them strike force, probably 18, yeah. 18 times over the course of the weekend. <clears throat> But strike zone, uh, seated one, they picked the Roboteers, which is uh, wasn't really a surprise. That's kind of what we what we expected. Uh, some other really strong alliances were the two, was the two seed thirteen twenty five and thirty three the QRBs. Wave and Blizzard uh, formed the three alliance. The five alliance was South Tex um, and nine thirty. So all the way down, there was some really strong, um, really strong alliances. We ended up on the eight seed with Sabotage and the Mechanical Marauders. The Marauders were a team that we. Um, won the Finger Lakes Regional with, so we're really familiar with their defense. Um, and we're excited to play with 1640 and their swerve drive. So in the in the uh, elimination rounds, um, we were able to upset the number one alliance uh, in the quarterfinals, and that was really exciting. Um, on the mm -hmm. other side of the bracket, we saw some upsets as well. The six upset of the three alliance. Mm -hmm. um, so that was cool. And uh, I guess we'll just take a break here and see, guys, you guys spent some time on our field. What did you see from uh, some of the matches you were able to take in? So uh, one of the teams, it's try not to be biased here because of Tyler's on the team, <laughs> but we didn't really talk about 28-26 very much this year, if at all. I'm not sure if they made the top 25. So um, to see them do really well um, on the Archimedes division was really cool. I know um, so Tyler had some, you know, uh, uh, invested interest in that going on as well. Uh, so we were kind of bouncing around between Archimedes and Curie a lot on on um, Saturday. But what did you see, Tyler? Uh I mean, just attack on on there. I, I think there's definitely some surprises uh, that happened. I don't think a lot of people saw uh, the number one lines going down to eight, you know, with, uh, and now I got to think about this, just strike zone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with, I was calling strike four strike zone too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, of course, going with uh, Roboteers, I know Roboteers had some issues in regards to their uh, placement mechanism, uh, but, but nonetheless, I mean, well done uh, to you guys on the eight alliance. I think that was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I think 271 played some amazing defense, Justin. Uh, and yeah. uh, just really helped out your alliance a lot with that. So uh, I, I, Eric, who's my buddy, who's a drive coach on Wave, knows that I uh, do severely question their choice of 188 uh, in that position. I don't think 188's a bad team, but I, I'm surprised they didn't go with, uh, I think 910 probably would have been their best pick. I think, you know, in hindsight, maybe you could have said 930, of course, because they went with the division who were 5406, right? Uh, but 910, I thought, was, I thought for sure that's who they're going to go with, and I was a little bit surprised by that. Uh, and then I, if I remember correctly, I think, uh, nine, 10 ended up declining the number four seed. So they got stuck down at seven. So they got knocked down the yeah. quarters as well. And, uh, I think, you know, there were some cool opportunities. Uh, I think the Alliance two and Alliance, uh, seven, uh, competing against each other, I thought was going to be, uh, a, a pretty good matchup for something like that. And it did go to three matches and Alliance seven won the first one. So that was interesting to see. Uh, and then ju just going through, uh, you know, I, we saw, we saw that match, and then uh, Mike and I, yeah, we kind of hustled over the Curie, and we're kind of bouncing back and forth between the other divisions over there. And uh, I didn't see it at first with 50 for 06 and 930. 930 was playing amazing on Saturday. They had a lot of issues uh, before that, especially on Thursday. Uh, and they just kind of got it together. And if you look at their intake, it was, I mean, the intake just kind of wobbles and wonks, right? And it's, you, you question it a lot, but man, uh, 930 played really well. The Maguanico Bears is a team that I've known for a long time, being from Wisconsin. It's awesome to see the last time that they won. The last time they got a blue banner, I was a senior in high school, and that was 2004. Mm. So wow. it, it was pretty cool to see them uh, take the division. Uh, you know, Celtex uh, ended up playing spectacularly as well. Um, I know people call me out because I said that I thought they'd be out in quarters, and I did. Uh, but I'm happy to see that they did quite well uh, for something like that. And, of course, picking up a uh, running need uh, as well, too. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was uh, – We'll we'll talk about it a little bit later, probably more too. But you know, we thought we'd see two two Canadian teams on Einstein, that being mm -hmm. 11, 14, 20, 56. But um, really, nobody I think called it or was expecting you know 54, 6, and 13, 10 together. Um, so it was really uh, really interesting, really fun to see them together um, in the round robin, and then over uh, over at Ford Field. Yeah. 
Yeah, just having to play against the Alliance for the the brief two matches we had of, we uh, were against them, they were just firing us owners. They're 9:30, you're right, Tower. They, you know, we had them on our uh, on our scouting list as like a, a mid-level team on Thursday, and they were a top eight uh, a top eight pick on on Friday. They were oh they goodness. got so much better. Um, I mean, their Alliance came out in the first quarterfinal with 130 unpenalized points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th- mm-hmm. that was a bit of an anomaly in our communities in general. Our communities yeah. was a very heavily defended division, and that in that uh, match, nobody played defense um, on either side, so they were kind of at, uh, at run of the place. But it was just awesome to see. Um, so we were pitted next to Celtax. We talked to them a lot, so it was, we were really happy for them. Um, 13-10 played some incredible defense. They kicked our butt uh, in the semifinals, and to see them go on, it was a little bit of a surprise to see um, six take down the two. We thought the bees in, um, 1325 was a, a well-formed alliance with 1526 and 1720, uh, uh, 1720 was there, um, for their fourth pick as well. Uh, so for the six upset to that upset, the two, um, and go to the finals to see a, a five versus six finals is really kind of strange. Um, but we were happy to see, um, that number five alliance, uh, represent us on not only the Ron Robin, but eventually all the way to Ford field. Mm-hmm. Very good. Cool. Any other thoughts on Archimedes? Not for nope. me. Go on, it's gone. All right, so moving on over to Carson. So uh, really here, kind of the top three alliances, um, really kind of some big names here. So the Alliance captain took a number one seat overall, 51-72, the Gators. Uh, they've had a, just a, a great season. They picked up two regional wins, uh, both with uh, the number one seeds there, and then they go to Carson and pick up the number one seed there as well. So uh, they picked up. Um, 1796, the um, Robo Jackets and Robo Tigers. Yeah, Robo Tigers. And uh, this is a team we talked about. Justin knows well. They picked up the three back to back to back wins um, late in the season. We got to do an interview with them. So that should be out in a little bit. Um, just a really great team and uh, really just really showing that they, um, you know, we is probably at exhaustion now about talking about the, these weaker regionals, quote unquote, but um, just really, really well done there. So line number two, 50-50, Cowtown Robotics. Um, a team really did not talk about at all season until the end here. They were winners, uh, the Consumers Energy Division, and then um, picked up, uh, I think they were finalists there, uh, or they're semifinalists. Um, uh, in the round robin there, or not round robin at MSC, but yeah. And then they were paired up. They picked 111, um, Wild Staying. Again, another team we haven't really talked about much this season, but um, this alliance would go on to win the division. So really, really nice to see Wild Staying kind of get back into it. And then lastly, Team Dave on the alliance camp to number three would uh, pick up Team Rice. Um, and that alliance, <coughs> excuse me, would, uh, would uh, pick up the win in quarters, but then fall um, to the number number two alliance. So in the finals, we did see number one and number two, um, which as we will see, kind of um, odd, yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of odd. Um, but it would be that number two alliance that would uh, would pick up the win for Carson. And I don't, um, it was kind of just floating around, and it was kind of you know obviously common knowledge by the time the Ron Robin hit, but no number one seeds uh, made it uh, onto the Einstein Ron Robin, which is just fascinating to me. So I don't know if you guys, any other, anybody else had thoughts on, um, Carson, but, um, just kind of just yeah. quick, quick. Oh yeah. I, the, me, the most surprising thing was, uh, Alliance Chu gets out with the Alliance captain, not even playing most of the time. Mm. That's insane. So 50, 50 took themselves out a lot of the matches and put in 2052 nightcrawler instead, which, wow. uh, I mean, to me, I thought the Alliance won. I mean, after I, I thought 5172 is you're going to go with uh, Robo Tigers or Dave, and to see them then pick up 1816, uh, who won Chairman's, which we'll talk about later. But they also had a, a pretty decent robot. Uh, I was uh, surprised not to see them now. Uh, we'll show a uh, little spoiler. This made the clip of the week on here, but we'll show the 1796 compressor exploding. Uh, and yeah. I forget what, what match that was in, but that, I mean, that was insane. So I don't know how much that impacted them. It looked like uh, they were having some troubles. Uh, in the match where that happened as well, too. Uh, so, I mean, nothing, no disrespect against number two Alliance. They played really well. I think it's a huge decision if you're 50 50 in the Alliance captain to take yourself out and then to watch the rest of your Alliance win is an absolutely incredible feat. Uh, like, I mean, that's just nuts. You think about it. I mean, the, back, the backup robots playing most of the time and they take the division against some extremely uh, high end teams. Uh, well, how cool is that? Very cool. I didn't, I didn't know that. Like I said, I was on Archimedes, so I didn't know a lot of that. Um, wow. That's uh, really impressive by the two seed there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, Tyler, you want to take Curie? 
Well, who doesn't, right? I mean, <laughs> Kiri, yeah, Kiri, absolutely crazy division, of course. Uh, so you had, uh, I don't think too much uh, people surprised, 11-14 seating first uh, in the in the division on here. Uh, Strike Force uh, seating second, 20-56 seating third. That all seems to make a lot of sense. Uh, 78 seating fourth, I think a little bit of surprise. They're not a bad team by any means, but when you had some of the other power uh, in this division, uh, 195 following them, 35-38 after that. Uh, and then it kind of tears off a little bit uh, for something like that. You had a uh, Crevolution, which I think was a bit of a surprise taking the uh, uh, number seven uh, ranking. Uh, and then 20, 20, that makes sense. Uh, but alliance selections to me were were interesting on here. I, I think the uninteresting part is 11-14 taking 20-56. I don't think that's any surprise. And I have to admit, the number one alliance's uh, selections I thought were superb. 42-96, uh, I got to see it Seven Rivers. They were the defensive bot that won with Wave Robotics. Uh, there, so I was not surprised to see them taken for that. And then 107, excuse me, 107 was a robot that they took because they could double climb with them, and that's oh, that's oh. amazing. So literally, you have that versatility to sub that in and out, which is really cool. And then you look at uh, the next one, you had uh, Strike Force uh, picking 987. Um, I was a little surprised by that. I, I love 987. Uh, I'm I think pretty close with uh, people on that team. I was a little surprised they were taking second. Uh, over like 35, 38, maybe, uh, po possibly 12, 41, or maybe, maybe 195. Uh, but to me, uh, one of the other steals in the draft was picking up 1756 Argos as the third robot in that alliance. Yeah. Uh, that, that to me was a superb pick. I can't believe they dropped that far. I know Argos may, may not have been looking to their full form offensively, but they're a robot that can still score a decent amount, and I thought that looked really good. Yeah, which they had to do. I think I think it was Strike Force was having some issues in one of their matches or a company and then they, you know, swapped out for defense for offense. And yeah, when Argos, final... not obviously not as effective as Strike Force, but mm -hmm. um, at least able to try to keep it competitive. Yeah, so when finals came, which we'll get to in a second, but yeah, Strike Force had some issues with that. But I mean weird stuff. First off, uh quarters one plays, quarter two's plays, and then it stops, right? And everybody's looking around, what the heck's going on? Frank comes down, Aiden comes down. And it's one of those, like, you know, what just happened moments, right? And all of a sudden they announce that, hey, oh, the lighting on the blue line side is not working. We need to bring a elevator lift in to fix that. Because yeah, we like have a cherry picker. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, after we establish that, we also need to replay quarters one and quarters two. Uh, so that took four ever yeah. uh, so mike and i were waiting because we really want to see uh the strike force alliance play in quarter three and then i just ended up going to other fields to go watch them until uh they got ready so it was uh yeah it was interesting uh and then i think of course the highlight i think to a lot of people and surprise to many was in the uh semifinals an absolutely epic battle between the number one and number uh four alliance and in three the 195 uh 35, 38, 1073 alliance with some absolutely ridiculous defense by 1073 uh, takes them out. And, and if you haven't seen it, uh, go check. We did an interview with uh, 195. Uh, it's on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Uh, and them talking about 1073 and what an amazing pickup that was. So kudos to them uh, for that. And then, of course, in winning the finals, uh, unfortunately, uh, Strike Force uh, having some issues with their uh, manipulator and not able to grab game pieces like they wanted to. Uh, unfortunate thing, way to go, but well earned and well deserved by 35, 38, 10, 73, uh, 195. And then I'm forgetting their other alliance partner off the top of my head, which is 230. So congrats to them. Yeah, I mean, it was epic. And, you know, there's a lot of expectations, you know, obviously for them 14, 20, 20, 56. But, you know, just it's just it was tough watching uh, watching that with their with that um, with um with their alliance partner just kind of falling off to uh, have three, and he, I mean, you could just see the, the defeat in in the, in the other red alliance there, and it was it was tough to watch. And but uh, yeah, the <clears throat> excuse me, the one ninety five alliance uh, just really had a lot of energy and, and mojo going for him, and uh, it was really great just to kind of see them battle back. And I'm sure we'll talk about some of these uh, some of these other teams coming up here in the top twenty five. But yeah, Curry Curry was epic, uh, just so deep, and will go down in history as kind of one, one of the deepest divisions to ever be. So and it played uh, out spectacularly. It really did. It I did. Mean, it did. It was pretty nuts just to see the way that outcome came and ridiculously exciting. Mm -hmm. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. 
You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.